Today, we're going to demonstrate a method to eliminate glossy privet without the use of toxins. People ask me, why does it matter that we get all these ligustrums out of here? What harm are they really doing? They're trees. They provide shade. Yeah, they do. They provide too much shade. As you can see, all these light brown trunks are ligustrums. And they've taken out everything in the understory. I'm Cliff Tillich, the Grim Reaper to Glossy Privet. The Gustrum Lucidum. We're going to show you today how to make these Ligustrums wish they'd grown somewhere else. I always wear my leather gloves when working with sharp tools. And we will be working with sharp tools. Okay, how does girdling work? Girdling works by separating the sugar factories from the root system. Most of the sugar produced by leaves goes down the tree to feed the roots. It doesn't come back up to feed the leaves, they keep what they need. What we're going to do is take out the tissue that is the pipeline to get sugar from the top of the tree to the root system while leaving the tissue in place that is the pipeline for getting water from the roots up to the leaves. That way the top of the tree stays alive, the roots keep pumping water to the top, and the roots don't get any nutrition. The roots die of starvation, and the whole tree dies. I'm going to take my hawk billed knife, and I'm going to make a couple of circumferential cuts around the trunk. Almost like I'm cutting through canvas. And that little rip, rip, rip is the tissue of the phloem being cut one strand at a time by my knife. When I no longer hear that, when the resistance to going in deeper gets fairly hard, I know I'm done. When I use a saw, I find that I usually go too deep on small trunks and way too shallow on large trunks. When I use a knife, I get it right. Okay, there's my first cut. I'm going to make my second cut about a hand's width above it. Okay, so the cutting is done. Next, we want to use our half chiseled putty knife to remove the bark. Wedged side, in. I can rock this, even with the dull edge, I can rock this in. And when I start seeing this lift off quickly, I know that I'm down at or close to that sapwood. And I'm just going to keep working in with a corner to get a little more purchase and keep working it off. Remember, once you get used to knowing where you are, knowing that you're down through the sapwood, and you're taking off the phloem, you can work pretty fast. You don't have to be perfect on this first step of removal, because we're going to come back and look at it again in just a few minutes. There's bright white uh, tissue here that, again, is a little bit like a matchstick. See the fibers, the coarse fibers against the blade of the putty scraper? This is phloem. If we leave that in place, we're leaving a pipeline for sugar in place. We want to go ahead and take that off. I come back and do a quick scrape. You can use the dull edge of the knife too, whatever works. You can do a quick scrape on all these bright white areas to see if I can remove them. 
As this trunk has started to darken, we can see splotchy patches of fibrous tissue. We thought we'd gotten all the phloem off, but we actually hadn't. So we can come back and do a light scraping. After the phloem's dried out a little bit, it's easier for it to come off. You can see here I'm pulling off something that's more like a film. That probably is either the inside of the phloem or it's the cambium itself. The cambium itself is what we need to remove. The outside of this wood is shiny. If it's shiny, it has cambium on it. Okay, we could continue scraping here to get these blotches off, but let's stop and go to scrubbing. Coarse pad, soapy water, See all those fibers coming off at the edge of the pad? These fibers are phloem. We could keep scraping, but it's easier and faster to get it off with soap, water, and a scrub brush. Okay, we're pretty well done. That looks and feels clean. Now there's one final step we're going to do here, a second wash. If we do the wash with soapy water right, it's enough. But being a human, I don't always get things right on the first try. So we use IPA, isopropyl alcohol, 70%. and scrub again with it. Either of these solutions is actually enough by itself if you do the job thoroughly. But I find that when I go back and repeat with a second type of cleaner, a second type of pad, I'm more likely to see and remove tissue that I would otherwise leave behind. One nice advantage of using the isopropyl alcohol, especially for this last step, is that it dries the tissue out a little bit. If we leave cambium behind but it dries out, it will die and we don't have to worry about it closing the gap. There we go. We now have a trunk on a tree that will go downhill because we've girdled it. If we walk away, the tree will survive, the trunk will survive, because every other trunk is feeding the root system. To finish the job, we're going to do the same kind of girdle on every other trunk. I like to not remove even the smallest trunks, even something as small as my little finger, because every leaf on those is putting additional burden on the root system. The more burden we keep on the root system, the more difficult a time it will have pumping water without having extra sugar. So the better chance we'll have to kill the tree faster. Thanks for watching. I'm Cliff Tillich, the Grim Reaper to Glossy Privet. City staff know where to find me if you have any questions. See you in the woods.